Hey everyone, I'm Meg McGrath and I'm a strategic customer success manager here at Crossbeam. Thank you so much for joining my session on how to ignite co-selling and collaboration with reps in Salesforce. Today, we're gonna to talk about four popular co-selling plays that you can run by making Crossbeam data available in your Salesforce instance. We're also gonna cover some real world examples and best practices from Samantha Samuels, who's a VP of partnerships at Front5. And before we get started, I have to share my favorite partners, which are pizza and red wine, because in my opinion, there is no better way to spend your Friday night. Maybe that's a sign that I'm old now, but let's dig in. So in this session, we're gonna cover an overview of how you can use Crossbeam within your Salesforce instance. Plus, we're gonna cover four co-selling plays for you and your team to run. The first is how to boost outbound conversions with partner-led messaging. The second is how to swap warm introductions with your partners. The third is exchanging intel on active deals to move them forward. And the fourth is how to activate integrations for your current customers. And just to call out, all of this assumes that you've completed your Crossbeam onboarding journey. So that means that you've connected a data source, you've connected with at least one partner, you've created your standard populations, and you're sharing data with a partner and receiving data back from them. And then finally, this is also assuming that you've installed the Salesforce integration and are ready to get going. All right, so first I'm gonna give you an overview on how to integrate Crossbeam data into Salesforce. Our customers typically want to see Crossbeam data in Salesforce to enrich account views and action insights across your go-to-market teams where they're already working. So the first way that we do this is through the Crossbeam widget. This helps keep partnerships top of mind for your go-to-market teams by making partnership insights available on the accounts, leads, contacts, and opportunities objects. So here on the right, you can see the widget on the account page for my prospect, SKUVault. I can see where SKU Vault is overlapping with my partners, along with partner tags, and other details that'll give me deeper insights on this account. Again, you can see these Crossbeam insights right where I'm already working, and it's gonna keep our reps focused and efficient. And our second Salesforce capability is the custom object. Here's a view of what that looks like. The custom object allows you to build detailed reports, trigger workflows, and build partnership performance dashboards by sending data into this custom object. Today in this session, we're going to be focusing on the widget, but my colleague Adali is going to be going through how to build reports and dashboards using this custom object in another session. So definitely stay tuned for that. All right, so now I'm going to show you how you can actually get this integration enabled and some of the customization settings that we have available. So when you log into your Crossbeam instance, you're going to be on your home page, but we want to head over to the integrations tab here on the right. And you're gonna see a whole host of integrations that we have available, but today we're obviously focusing on the Salesforce integration we have here. And so to get started, you're gonna click into your settings and then enable your integration. And one really awesome thing that we have here is the ability for you to customize what data actually hits the widget. So you can really keep your sellers focused on the partnership insights that you're ready to go to market with and keep them efficient and just looking at the right stuff. So firstly, I can choose which populations from my data that I want to send over. And then here I can also choose which of my partner data I want to hit the widget as well. So you can do that broadly with our standard populations here, or even on a specific partnership level with their populations as well. So for example, let's say Holver is a newer partner of mine we're evaluating a tech integration, but we're, we're not really ready to go to market with them. I don't really want these insights pushed to my sellers yet because I want to keep them focused on the partners that we're really mature and ready to go with. I can exclude the whole of our data for now until we're ready to have them go to market with us. And so it's just a simple click to make sure that I have a really curated view for my sellers. Another way you can keep sellers focused on target accounts and ops is by controlling who can or cannot see data in the widget or the open and crossbeam button. And you do this through enhanced permission sets that we have in Salesforce. All right, let's dive into these plays. First up, we have play number one on how to boost outbound conversions with partner-led messaging. Let's say your SDRs are having some trouble getting into some key accounts. They can use the widget to see which of their target prospects are also customers of your tech partners. It's like giving your SDRs x-ray vision into a prospect's tech stack. Instead of them reaching out completely cold with generic messaging, they can customize their outreach by including the better together messaging, highlighting your technical integration and your joint value proposition. 
Here's my contact, Gianni Benitez, who's a prospect of mine from SKU Vault. Through the widget on the right, I can see that SKU Vault is a customer of Holver, who we have an awesome integration with. Instead of going in cold, I'm gonna customize my messaging to Gianni to highlight that Holver integration and further demonstrate that joint value proposition. This can also be a great revenue conversion play, especially if your SDRs are comparing free accounts or trying to you know, push a paid technical integration. Some of our most successful customers like FriendBuy, who you're gonna hear from later, Vidyard and Rollworks are using partner-led messaging approaches like this, as opposed to going in completely cold. It's yielding really great results like a 45% increase in outbound opportunities and a 20% higher response rate for outbound emails. Finally, what do you wanna include in one of these partner-led outbound emails? Samantha Samuels, who's the VP of Partnerships at FriendBuy, suggests a couple of things. The first is an acknowledgement that your platform is integrating with your tech partner's product. You really wanna show that value proposition of that technical integration and it's always great to throw in some social proof to establish credibility there. That could be a case study, a blog post, maybe some customer testimonials. And then finally, you wanna obviously include the call to action for your prospect to book a meeting with your team. All right, and some pro tips when using this play. Firstly, you wanna be a good partner. A lot of that is transparency. So you just wanna let your partner know that you're testing out this approach to help drive your integration demand and activations, and just making sure they're on board before you get started. The second is to be subtle in your messaging. We have an example here from Rollworks on how they're messaging to their prospects about a joint integration that they have with HubSpot. You'll see here that it's not super overt in mentioning that they know the prospect is a HubSpot customer, but it's really just highlighting their integration, the better together story, and allowing their SDRs to reach out with more targeted and custom messaging to their prospects to break through noise. All right, on to play number two on how to swap warm introductions with a partner. So you wanna help your AEs get warm introductions into target accounts by seeing which of their prospects are customers of your partners. And remember, partnerships are always gonna be a two-way street. You wanna make sure that you're giving warm introductions as much as you're requesting them. So keep that reciprocity in mind. Here on my screen, you can see my prospect SKU vault. You all know we're trying to break into them. And I can see that my partner Holver already has SKU Vault as a customer. So here I can click into the widget and view more details to see if this is a potential account that Holver may be able to help me out with, with an introduction. From there, you really wanna work with your partners to understand what the best way to make an introduction would be. Is it gonna be through a LinkedIn message, maybe in person at an upcoming conference, or through the old fashioned way with an email intro? A good way to maintain that reciprocity is by keeping a healthy dialogue between you and your partners through regular check-ins, agendas, and goals for your meetings. One thing that we always recommend is adding a request for warm intros agenda item to make sure that you're both giving and getting every time that you meet and making sure that everything is reciprocal and level. One thing I definitely want to plug is this co-selling checklist that we have for you all. This is a great way to just make sure that your meetings are valuable and you're both getting out what you need in your joint partnership. All right, on to our next pro tip. So we always recommend leveraging templates and pre-written messaging to make the intro swap frictionless. For example, if Holbler does agree to intro me to SKU Vault, it would be really great if I had pre-made messaging that I could give to them and they could use to contact their customer directly without really doing any extra work. The email could include information about my company, use cases for our integration, some better together messaging, and then of course, a call to action asking the customer if they'd be open to an introduction. The partner manager at Holver could fire that off. And if the customer is cool with an introduction, they can introduce you and the AE in the next email. All right, so let's get started with play number three. Here we're gonna focus on exchanging partner intel on active deals to help move them forward. Your AEs can help move your deals forward by seeing which of your partners have relationships at their open opportunities. In other words, which of your partners can help influence your deals. So let's say a deal has gone dark, become a little competitive, and your reps really want to get intel to get some extra backup and keep things moving in the right direction. You can use the widget to do this. So you'll see on my screen here, I have an open opportunity with Content Square. And in the widget, I can see that my partner, Bozala, has Content Square as a customer, and they also have an open opportunity. So 
Maybe they're, you know, expanding their use cases with an upsell or approaching renewal, and they might have multiple contacts that they may be able to give me a little bit of information on, or perhaps even make an introduction. I would love to connect with my AE or some other partner folks at Opazala to understand, you know, who the decision makers might be that they're working with, giving me any intel on, you know, previous procurement experiences, budget, what have you. Ideally, they could also be a reference and put in a good word for our product as well. And then additionally here, another selling point that I might want to be able to highlight is, you know, our technical integration. Um, that could also help influence the deal as well. So pro tip for this play is to attend your reps pipeline meetings to identify which opportunities you might want to engage partners with for a little bit of extra help. You can just really be a fly on the wall during these meetings and listen for deals that are stuck, could use a little extra help, and then you can even just pull up the widget right during those calls to identify which partners might be a good fit to help out and give you a little bit of intel to move things forward. All right, and here we are at play number four, activating new integrations. This is a play that is near and dear to my heart because as a CSM, I'm always thinking about how I can get my customers to activate new integrations so that you know they're stickier in the product and they're also getting more value. So here your CSMs can drive integration activation by tapping into partner data within the widget. Let's say I have a call with Matomo, who's my customer, and I want to see what integrations might be a good fit for them to turn on this quarter. I can go check out the widget and see which of my partners also have Matomo as a customer and identify which may be a good tech fit to bring up on the call and see if they'd be interested in activating this integration. Pro tip for this one is, again, we know integration adoption approves stickiness and retention, so you really want to align your customer success team's incentives with integration activation. So one thing we always suggest is to collaborate with your customer success lead to build OKRs to really push integration adoption. For example, let's say there's a KPI for each CSM to activate three integrations per customer. This is really going to encourage your CSMs to actively seek out this information through the widget, identify which partners might be good for, you know, integration adoption and help them hit that goal. And that rounds out our plays. So let's hear from Samantha Samuels, the VP of partnerships at Friendby to learn how her team is driving similar co-selling motions. We had a chat with Samantha Samuels to understand how she uses Crossbeam at Friendby. Introduce yourself, Samantha. Hi, I'm Samantha Samuels and I'm the VP of partnerships at Friendby. So in the spirit of Crossbeam, what is your favorite partnership? So my favorite partnership is uh, Ben Cohen and Jerry Greenfield, also known as Ben and Jerry's. Ben and Jerry's partnership not only has delighted ice cream lovers all over the country, but they also donate 8% of their earnings to nonprofits. So tell us about your role at Friendby. So I'm responsible for identifying and cultivating strategic partnerships with companies in the MarTech ecosystem. And I work cross-functionally with engineering, partner marketing, customer success, and sales. So how did you get your internal teams bought into using the Crossbeam widget? First, I sent a very long email to our CEO and head of finance requesting budget to pay for Crossbeam so we could leverage the Salesforce widget. That, and I highlighted probably in more excruciating detail than needed the current state of affairs and how difficult it was for us to engage partners without this widget. And then I shared what I believed would be the biggest value adds to help bring in new business, help reduce churn, and increase integration adoption. Uh, and about five minutes later, I got an email saying, this is approved. Um, I'd be happy to share a copy of this email for anyone who's interested. What processes have you improved most from getting partner data into Salesforce? Our processes have dramatically improved, both internally and externally since being able to include cross the, the Crossbeam widget on Frembuy's account and opportunities objects in Salesforce. I attend our weekly sales uh, pipeline meetings, and now we can see in real time which open opportunities are customers of our partners, and I can act much more quickly to engage our partners to keep deals moving. In addition to Lunch and Learns, I've started scheduling 15-minute meetings with AEs and CSMs at our strategic partners, to review our Better Together deck and educate them about friend buy, let them know that we exist and could be a really huge value add to their prospects and customers. 
So from this new motion, we've seen about a 30% increase in new partner sourced opportunities. So how are your SDRs using partner data in Salesforce? Our SDRs are huge fans of the Crossbeam widget in Salesforce. We can now generate reports in Salesforce to see which of our prospects are customers of our partners. And we used to only be able to rely on tools like Built With or ETL Insights to generate leads, but now with Crossbeam and Salesforce, we can generate much more highly qualified account lists and create outreach sequences that include partner-led messaging. And using partner-led messaging and our outbound processes has led to a 45% increase in new qualified opportunities. How are your AEs using partner data in Salesforce? So our AEs are now making friends with the AEs and CSMs over at our partners to help with deals. So for example, if one of our AEs is speaking with a high value prospect, I'll ask the partner manager to help make an introduction to the CSM who's managing that customer. And then the CSM and our AE will get on a call together with partner managers from both teams as well. And there are typically two items on the agenda. Agenda item one is the CSM provides insight into how the customer is leveraging their technology, any strategic goals our team should know about. And then our AE typically comes prepared with a set of questions to ask the CSM. The second part of the call is our partner team will highlight the value of our integration to the CSM because they're more often than not aware of FriendBuy or the value that our integration provides. So the CSM can serve as a champion of FriendBuy when speaking with their customer. And are your CSMs using partner data too? Our customer success team uses the Crossbeam widget in Salesforce to see which of their customers are now also customers of our tech partners. This has been a huge value add for our team because now our CSMs can come to their customer strategy calls armed with relevant strategic recommendations for how their customers can get even more out of FriendBuy by leveraging automation with their tech stack. Our partner team actually creates uh, what we call workflow recipes, which is essentially a step-by-step help doc that outlines exactly how customers can leverage these automated workflows. And then we supplement these workflows with high-level slides to share in the sales process and then in meetings with customers. Thanks for dropping by, Samantha. Anything you'd like to add? Thank you so much for having me at the Connector Summit. Please feel free to contact me on LinkedIn if you want to chat more about partnerships. And that's a wrap to my session, How to Ignite Co-Selling and Collaboration with Reps in Salesforce. As a recap, we covered an overview of how you can use Crossbeam within your Salesforce instance, four plays for co-selling, and we learned some killer co-selling insights from Samantha Samuels at Friendby. I really hope you guys enjoy using these plays. Let us know how they go. And thanks so much for joining us.